they frame it as if the whole reason for making Facebook and building something was because I wanted to get girls or wanted to get into some kind of social institution. They just can't wrap their head around the idea that someone might build something because they like building things. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Stories of Success, a new YouTube channel that aims to tell the life stories of entrepreneurs and innovators from the first idea to the first million. In today's episode, we're talking about Mark Zuckerberg, the programming prodigy that turned a talent for making cool things into a social network dynasty. The website he started in his dorm room when he was 19 years old is one of the most influential in the world, with profiles for over a quarter of the world's population. Zuckerberg became a self-made billionaire before his 24th birthday. How is that possible? That's what we're going to find out on today's episode of Stories of Success. Mark Zuckerberg was born on May 14, 1984 to upper middle class parents in the outskirts of New York. His father taught him to code basic in his early teens, and Mark really took to it. He created a program that allowed the computer at his dad's dental office to communicate with the family computer, and called it Zucknet. The program was an early form of messenger. While in school, he excelled at a number of subjects from computer science to languages and literature. He transferred to Exeter Prep School, where he met his good friend Adam D'Angelo. Between them, they created music software called Synapse that learned what music people liked and made suggestions based on it. As writer Jose Antonio Vargas said, some kids play computer games, Mark created them. It was clear he had an entrepreneur's mindset from an early age. It was created as a high school project, but drew the attention of big software companies, including Microsoft, who apparently offered Zuckerberg a rumored $1 million for it, as well as a job before college. Despite the job offer, Zuckerberg chose to attend Harvard, doing computer science and philosophy. His first year of college passed without any significant creations, and probably a lot of partying, but it was in his sophomore year that he began to show signs of things to come. He created a site called Course Match at the beginning of his second year which had allowed his classmates to log in and see what courses their friends, and also that cute girl from first year psychology, were taking in their upcoming year. It quickly became popular, which prompted Zuckerberg to try a new idea he'd recently had, that he'd go on to call Face Mash. Face Mash was created on October 2003, with the intention of finding the most attractive person on campus. The website brought up two photos of Harvard students of the same sex, using their college profile photos, and other students could pick which one was hotter. Slowly, a ranking was formed. Zuck created the entire thing during a tipsy 8-hour coding session that ended at 4am. Despite the drunken programming, Face Mash was an instant hit, being used by 450 students in one day before the Harvard admin team shut it down due to complaints of sexism, among other things. It's important to note that, unlike in the portrayal of the Social Network movie, both males and females were included in Face Mash. Zuck was largely misrepresented in the movie, as the story was told from the point of view of ousted founder Eduardo Saverin, Mark actually met his wife that year in Harvard and has been widely reported by those who knew him as friendly and relatively popular, unlike in the movie portrayal. Anyway, Zuckerberg was put under probation over the incident and was threatened with exclusion, although apparently didn't phase him too much at the time. As it's written in David Kirkpatrick's book, The Facebook Effect, it's not that Mark necessarily sets out to break the rules, he just doesn't pay much attention to them. Over the next few months, undeterred by his warning from Harvard, Mark worked more on computer programs, simply because he enjoyed it. He created a web program that brought up art images from his Art in the Time of Augustus class and encouraged his classmates to add comments beside them to create study aids. He then used these notes to cram for an exam far more quickly. He also created a program called Six Degrees of Harry Lewis, a program that created links between people and his favourite computer science professor. He also began working on other people's projects, setting up a website for the Association of Harvard Black Women, and significantly, helping three Harvard seniors finish coding on their website idea, the Harvard Connection. Zuckerberg was sought out for the project in November 2003, after the founders heard about Face Mash through the Harvard Magazine. They asked him to finish programming their social network site, Harvard Connection, since they didn't have much coding experience themselves. Zuckerberg agreed to do it, soon lost interest in favour of his own site, the Facebook. He stole the Harvard Connection team while he coded his new site, and may have borrowed some ideas, which led to a lawsuit and even a movie down the line. Although the initial idea sourcing process may not have been entirely on the up, the execution and launch of Facebook was close to flawless. Zuckerberg bought the domain thefacebook.com on January the 11th for $30 and officially launched the site on February the 4th by emailing a few of his friends to check it out. 
Just four days after it launched, 450 Harvard undergrads had signed up, and another 300 joined the following day. As previously mentioned, he had a knack for building social websites that people wanted to use. The idea of the Facebook was to move the physical books the university issued with a picture of all the students, called Facebooks, online and allow students to update them with more recent pictures. It also allowed students to see what other students were talking about, what their interests were, and also their relationship status. Another two weeks later, the Facebook had over 6,000 users, which formed over three quarters of the undergraduates as well as some alumni. Not only did thousands of students sign up, but they also readily spent hours on it each day, making it unique to every other website. Zuck put a team of his roommates and friends together to handle various aspects of the project, as he didn't yet consider it a business. Eduardo Saverin handled business, Dustin Moskowitz was a programmer, Andrew McCollum was a graphic artist, and Chris Hughes, as a spokesman, all joined the team. With a team around him that complemented his strengths and weaknesses, Zuckerberg tried expanding Facebook into other colleges, starting with Yale, Stanford, and Columbia. Facebook swept the competition, and the number of people signing up kept growing. They began to expand into the rest of the Ivy League colleges, despite the fact the founders still had full course loads at Harvard. It would only take them a few weeks for 80% of each of the campuses to sign up for Facebook. The team decided to rent an apartment in Palo Alto for the summer, as it was where all the big startups seemed to come from. After many 16-hour days and all-nighters, the Facebook reached 100,000 users. In June 2004, just four months after it launched, a venture capital firm offered $10 million to buy the Facebook outright. Zuckerberg and the team had made it, but he apparently didn't even consider the offer, often said to continue growing it for themselves. For Zuck, it was never really about the money. It was always about create like a really cool product. Over the summer, the team continued to expand Facebook's functionality and user base. They also met Sean Parker, a Silicon Valley veteran who became their president and introduced them to investors, including Peter Thiel, who put 500k into the adventure for around 10% of the business. All in all, a pretty solid investment. It took Mark and his friends all of two minutes to decide to postpone their Harvard return, as the social network was all about timing, and they didn't want to screw this up. Are you winning and going back to school? Well, that's unclear. I am 21, but I finished my sophomore year and came out to Palo Alto, fully expecting that I'd actually go back to Harvard in the fall, but didn't quite make it after Peter put his money in. But um, <laughs> we started building a company instead, and you know, got a little sidetracked. But fortunately, Harvard lets you take indefinite periods of time off. Yeah. So, you know, if this ever falls through, I'm back at Harvard. <laughs> now dropouts, the team focused on expansion. They hit many road bumps and continued to work extremely hard, but it paid off for them as they reached a million users in early 2005. They continued to add more features, such as the ability to share photos and post on people's walls, and their valuation kept climbing. If we fast forward seven years, Facebook went public in the largest tech IPO ever to date. It valued the company at over $100 billion and made all of the founders billionaires while still in their early to mid 20s. While there's no doubt Zuck's a genius, there's still many things we can learn about him and his story so far. If you want to hear more about the early days, be sure to pick up the Facebook effect with the link in the description. Facebook was an example of a great idea at the right time with fantastic execution. They made many mistakes along the way, but it all paid off in the end. One thing we have to remember is that the multi-multi-billion dollar company that we all use today was started by a handful of forward-thinking teams in a college dorm room. With that in mind, I encourage you all to keep hustling towards your own goals. Hopefully one day soon, I'll be telling your tale on stories of success.